More than a hundred years ago, Philadelphia businessman and department store owner John Wanamaker famously said, Half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The trouble is, I don't know which half. Seventy years later, David Ogilvy, founder of one of the biggest advertising firms in Britain, and by many considered the father of advertising, still had a similar complaint. Consumers don't think how they feel. They don't say what they think. And they don't do what they say. And today, the problem these men were addressing, is still with us. This problem being, that it is very hard, if not impossible, to know how marketing, in any shape or form, is affecting consumers. Marketing is a very broad concept. It is about the look and feel of the product itself, its packaging, or the way it is sold. But it is also about how to advertise for it. In stores. On the streets. In magazines. Or on radio and TV. And nowadays, online. The goal of all these efforts is to increase the chance consumers will buy the product. Or that they will value the brand more highly, and consequentially are willing to pay a higher price. Whether that succeeds, is obviously best gauged from the amount of sales or revenue the brand is generating. But those are only known after all costs of production and advertising have been made. Therefore, product design and its marketing are often tested before they are launched. This can be done in focus groups, where consumers talk about what they think of the design or the advertisements. Or via surveys and polls. However, the outcome of such pre-market research often has very little bearing on what will subsequently happen in the market. 80 to 90 percent of new products still fail, even after extensive pre-market testing. An infamous example is the launch of New Coke in 1985. Coca-Cola was concerned over the fact that Pepsi-Cola appeared to taste better in blind tasting. So it decided to change its recipe. A recipe that had remained unaltered since the inception of the brand in 1886. Obviously, they didn't do this overnight. They had consumers taste a huge series of alternative versions. They tried different packaging, and did all sorts of other pre-market tests. In the end, 200,000 consumers were involved. And then, new Coke was put on the market only to be taken off 79 days later. It was the biggest failure of industry consumer co-creation ever. Why is it that consumers say one thing, and then do something completely different? Why do the honest opinions and intentions that they express in focus groups or surveys, have so little bearing on how they will actually behave once in a store? A major reason is that much of our buying behavior is guided by unconscious mechanisms. Product design, and advertising in particular, work on brain processes that largely escape our conscious control. Marketing exerts its effects by carving associations with products and brands in our minds, without us knowing how. Therefore, it is simply impossible for consumers to predict how they will react to a product, once confronted with it on a shelf. Does this imply that marketing will forever stay the trial and error game, that Wanamaker and Ogilvy claimed it to be? Possibly not. Recent advances in neuroscience and psychology make it possible to much better gauge what is going on in the unconscious mind. Partly conscious, or even unconscious emotions, can now be measured with techniques like functional MRI scans. Unconscious associations are revealed with psychological techniques like the implicit association test. In this way, the impact on the brain that advertising has, can be measured directly. And indeed, research has shown that in this way, consumer behavior can often be predicted much better than by asking for opinions or intentions. How does this work? Typically, a TV commercial will evoke different emotions. These may be simple ones, such as the desire to consume more by the product. Or more negatively, some repulsion or anger may be felt, not only at the product, but possibly towards the actors or the story that's told. Also, what is shown, may make the viewer feel insecure or puzzled, which is, unknowingly, evoking a light sense of fear at the emotional level. More complex feelings may get triggered as well, such as trust towards the brand, or amusement, or sympathy. Some scenes may draw attention, others may induce boredom. Often, many of these emotions arise simultaneously, making it hard for the subject to really know what effect the commercial has. But each of these emotions activates specific networks of neurons in the brain. And functional MRI scans are optimally suited to pick up the activation of all of them. In this way, the brain scanner can quantify the exact impact of the TV commercial on the consumer brain. What use does it have, to know what brain networks are activated? Key to transforming this to useful advice are so-called benchmarks. Here, 
the neural activation patterns of TV commercials that have been shown to have a certain effect are collected. Some activation patterns may be specific for commercials that incentivize people to buy the product or to value the brand. Other may be specific for people finding the commercial entertaining or amusing. Others still may be predictive of annoyance, something that would indicate better not to air the advertisement or to change it. By comparing the neural activation of any new commercial with that of these benchmarks, highly accurate predictions can be made of the future effect it will have. Such measurements, when combined with other techniques such as eye tracking, real-time MRI, or EEG, can provide highly valued insights into the effectiveness of marketing stimuli. On the basis of these, informed decisions can be made on airing, target audience, editing or other changes to the material, or on how it is optimally combined with other marketing tactics. Psychology offers interesting techniques as well. A recent development is that of the implicit association test. This task measures the unconscious associations people feel with a brand, a product, or proposition. Machine learning algorithms then calculate, to what extent these associations are able to predict whether people have the intention to buy the product, like the brand, or value the proposition. This reveals which associations are either beneficial to the product or brand, or which ones are better avoided. This is of particular use in taking strategic decisions on where the marketing should go to increase brand value. These are just a few examples of the direction in which this new field of marketing research is going. Neuromarketing, is what it has been called. Whether it is going to solve the problems that Wanamaker and Ogilvy pointed out is to be seen. But an exciting development it certainly is.